Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Okay, go ahead and get your Bibles out. We are teaching on the subject of blood covenant. Started last week. If you didn't see it, you have to go and watch it online. Um, we are teaching on blood covenant as the foundation too. When we get in the next couple, three weeks, we're going to get into start teaching on the, the authority of the believer. And so we understand that our authority is based in our covenant. So we want to lay the groundwork, although very lightly. We're not covering this in the depth that we could cover it in. But we did want to give you a, a um, understanding. No youth. Children's church. Are you poking them? I thought you were trying to remind me that we're supposed to let us. Okay. Rules in church are no poking, elbowing, or anything else of the sort. Pink, or pinching, that's right. I don't know if y'all know this or not. Brother Hagin had a pinching devil. He'd walk up to people and pinch them on the back of their arm. And Patsy turned around one day and said, I'm going to cast that out of you. He said, you can't do that. We like it in here. <laughs> and all you charismatics get so uptight. <laughs> Oh, me. Oh, me. Praise God. Some people do that. They just fall out of the chair and, and, and get unsaved. So, well, we're talking about blood covenants. We talked about last week, and, and there's no way to recover what we covered last week. Um, there's too much information. But, uh, again, covenant means to cut with the blood flows, the mingling of the blood, all the curses, the blessings, the, the equality of, of partnership, and how everything belongs to one belongs to the other. That meant when God made cho- and uh, God chose to make the covenant with man. As for me, my covenant is with you. Now, remember, because of the fall of man, God had to have legal access back into the earth. And because of that, he decided, he, he found a man who would, who would uh, charge his children after him and do the, his will, and he found Abram. And then he came to him and said, it's for me, my covenant's with you. And made a covenant with Abraham. It was a blood covenant. We talked about how the, beat, the animals were slain. And then he, Abraham went to a deep sleep, woke up, and there was a smoking furnace and a burning lamp walking between the animals and the blood. That was God's presence. Glory come down and walking in that blood because it's a blood covenant. Abraham had to circumcise the foreskin of his flesh and all of his descendants had to do that because that was the sign of the covenant. That was the mark of the covenant. We talked about how Stanley and Livingston, that they, they would rub something in the wounds to scar them, to signify they were in covenant. And see, our covenant with God, with Abraham, was his circumcision. But in the New Testament, it's the circumcision of the heart, not of the flesh. Amen. We have the scar in the realm of the Spirit. We've been circumcised in the heart by God. We're in the covenant. Amen. And so last week, we kind of got down to um, uh, after where Abraham was giving up Isaac. Let's get to Genesis 22. We're going to kind of uh, segue back into that. Isn't that a fancy word? It means tie back into Okay, for all you like me who didn't know what it meant. But I just wanted to sound intelligent this morning. Some of y'all going, don't try it, Pastor, it'll get you hurt. Yes, we're going to ride the little two-wheel thing back into it. I asked Janie yesterday, I was going over to uh, Penny's grandson's wedding, and I was doing the opening prayer. And, uh, and, of course, she's Colombian. Kelly's Colombian, so, uh, you know, they speak Espanol. So I said, honey, now, how do you say name in, in, in Spanish? And she said, como se llama? Or como se llama? And I'm like, I want to say in the name of Jesus Cristo. She said, don't try it, honey. <laughs> she just prayed to them, they'll, they'll figure it out. <laughs> she said, just be you. I said, that is me. Trying and walking right into a wall at the process. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was going to try to end the prayer in, in Spanish and say, in the name of Jesus Cristo. You know, I thought they would enjoy that. She said, don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story before we go back to Genesis 22. Uh, a few years ago, well, when we first moved into our new house, new house, 17 years ago this year, we moved into the house, and um, we, had, we were doing the upstairs, and, and uh, somebody who used to go to the church uh, offered to have to send his guys over and, and finish, hang and finish the sheetrock. I was going to do it. He said, look, I saw him lose. He said, I'll send my guys over and do it for free. I thought, yes. Yeah. 
Bring them. Come on. So, you know, one of the guys, he's, and one of the guys was there a lot and finished, and he was just finished, and I, and I hollered up, and I, and I said, I was trying to ask him in Spanish, are you hungry? His wife, he brought his wife that night because we were going to feed him, and she bust out laughing. And I knew I said something wrong. I did not know, are you hungry, and do you want a man, are really close. <laughs> She almost fell off the couch with the baby. <laughs> That's why my wife said, don't try it. <laughs> Just don't try it. <laughs> hey, you want a hombre? <laughs> Back to the Bible. And so we have here... You never heard that before. Ask your mom if it's true. Yep. Do you want a man? And they're telling me what I did. Are you hungry? <laughs> yeah, he fell off the ladder. <clears throat> oh, my, 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 my. I try. Anyway, so here in Genesis 22, can y'all even get back to the Bible now? Y'all sit there and just, you can picture it, can't you? I'm so proud of myself. So God, God has made the covenant with Abraham. They're in covenant together, and God's pronounced, I always going to do, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to multiply you, I'm going to give you everything from the, you know, this river in Egypt to the great river Euphrates, all your land, hallelujah. I'm in covenant with you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to give you rain, I'm going to do, I'm going to do all this stuff for you, Abraham. You know, we're in covenant together, and, and then God doesn't ask for anything in return at the time. I'm going to give you a son. You can call him Isaac. Come out, of Sarah's, come out of Sarah, come out of you. At 99 and 89, and at 190, he was born. 100 for Abraham, 90 for Sarah. He's born. And about 13, 12, 13 years later, God shows up to ask for his side of the covenant. Take your son, your only son, and go to the place, names the place, and offer him to me for a sacrifice. They're in covenant together. Abraham gets up the next morning, loads up the animals, gets the servants, grabs Isaac, says, let's go, boy. And they head out for three days. After three days, they get to the base of where they're supposed to go up. And, and, and Abraham turns to the servants and says, look, stay here. I and the lad are going to go yonder and worship, and we'll come again to you. Now, the New Testament says that Abraham received Isaac raised from the dead in a figure. In other words, his faith knew this that in order for Isaac to be the seed that God said he would be, and in order for the God who cannot break covenant, but the God who keepeth covenant, even to a thousand generations, to fulfill his oath to Abraham, that in Isaac shall thy seed be, he's going to have to raise him from the dead when he offered him. Had to. So Abraham did not quench. Flinch, not quench. This is to quench. He didn't flinch. See why I shouldn't even speak Spanish? Sometimes you're worried about English. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, you know, he didn't flinch. Took him, of course, the eyes, it gets a little wood, fire, me and that. Hey, Pop, where's the sacrifice? <laughs> Boy, use the sacrifice. No. God will provide himself a lamb. Now, a little play on words there, but that's what he's saying. God will provide himself the sacrifice. Takes him up, builds the altar. Eyes are still looking around, and then here comes Dad with the rope. Now, don't you know that had to be a little disconcerting? <laughs> Binds him up, throws him up on top, draws a knife back. And, of course, I'm thinking, Eyes is going, Hey, Lord, any time now. Dad said you'd provide the ram. Lord! You've got to be thinking something that's going on. 
Abraham draws his hand and the angel cries, Don't! Touch not the lad. And then God begins to speak to him and, and says, Because you withheld not your son, your only son. And then he goes down, we get down to verse 16. And then, of course, they turn around, there's a, there's a ram in the thicket. They offer that on the altar. And then God speaks to him again and says this in verse um, 16. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and as thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy, the enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now what was this? God needed the faith seed of his covenant partner to deliver the harvest of redemption. So God needed the faith seed of his blood covenant. Remember, he's called the friend of God. In Eastern language, that means blood covenant partner. God needed the faith seed of the blood covenant partner so that he could deliver the harvest of redemption through the Jesus. Jesus was the harvest of Abraham's seed of offering Isaac. And in thy seed shall all the nations be blessed. Well, Galatians chapter 3 makes it clear. And he said, not the seeds as of many, but seed as of one, Christ. And in verse 29 of Galatians 3, he says, and if you be Christ, possess it. Then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, he said this, that the, that, the, that the seed of Abraham possessed the gates of his enemy. Now, you know, in one sense, he is talking about that the Jews would, would, would overcome. They would you know, they'd just win, 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 even when they're not supposed to win. Go, go ask all the Arabs in the Six-Day War what happened. 1967, they show up. They're going to they gonna surprise attack Israel. And after six days, Israel's bigger than they were before they showed up. And wore, uh, wore them out. Well, I have, a, I have a good friend, Fawaz. Yeah, Fawaz, we, we affectionately called him the Jordanian Jew bomber because his, his goal in life growing up was to go, join the Jordanian Air Force to go bomb the Jews. That was until he got saved. Came to America, went to Raymond, and now he's out preaching. Okay? He no longer wants to go bomb the Jews. But he, had, he knew people who fought in the Six-Day War. You know what they told him? He said, we came up over the dunes. There were millions of soldiers on the dunes. God sent his angels. You have a surprise attack by a superior army at the time come up to take somebody who's not expecting you to show up and they whip you in six days and take a bunch of land back from you. Angel showed up. Moral of the story, don't mess with the Jews. Why? Because God's, listen, God's oath to Abraham was spiritual and it was natural. And the natural lineage, the, 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 the Jews, still had the protection of Almighty God on them. And, well, they, the Germans tried to wipe them out, and they didn't wipe them out. Hello? I said it didn't wipe them out. And they, you don't, you, why don't you think the Arabs have not gone in there and wiped them out right now? Because they're scared. They still remember 1967. Hello. We tried it and we got whipped. So now they tried to use the UN to do it. Let Magog and Magog come down and see what happens. Anyway, God said this, that thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. The seed is Jesus. Everyone is blessed through Jesus Christ. This is, the, now listen, think about this. The covenant partner of God Abraham offered his son, not naturally. He went all the way. He didn't stick the knife in. God said, it's enough. Why? His faith was enough. Our faith, see, gets things done. And don't always think when God asks you to do something, he's going to tell you, no, I don't need for you to do it. But I'm telling you that in this case, he didn't need for him to slay Isaac. He just needed for him to, and by faith, he had already carried it out by faith and received and raised back up from the dead by faith. God said, that's all I need. Amen? Because you have withheld, not withheld your son, your only son. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you. And so we have, this, we have this covenant promise of God. Let's go now from the promise of God uh, over into Exodus chapter 3. 
Now, you know, is, uh, God told, told Abraham that his, his flock, I mean, his, his people, would be kept in captivity for a season. I like this. I don't have it written down. I, was trying, I didn't have time to come look for it this morning because I don't have a good concordance in my Bible. I was going, it came to me, and I was going, I need to share that scripture. But there's a place in, in, in all this of delivering children of Israel that the Bible says that God remembered his covenant with Abraham. God remembered his covenant with Abraham. When they were in captivity and they began to cry out, God remembered his covenant. And then in Genesis chapter 3, we have God appearing to Moses in the burning bush and uh, calling him to go deliver the children of Israel. And um, verse 16 says, Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord your God of your fathers. Now remember, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Why? Because God had a name change in their covenant. Abram became Abraham. God became the God of Abraham, and then subsequently the God of Isaac, and then subsequently the God of Jacob. These were extensions of the covenant, and then it was a perpetual covenant through the lineage. Oh, thank you. Exodus 2.24. He found it for me. All right. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and they cried, came up unto God by reason of the bondage, and God heard their groanings, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And then he sends Moses. Why did he send Moses? Because he had a covenant with Abraham. God, I said this this morning in Winston saying we need to say it here. All these people running around saying, it doesn't matter what I do. I can do anything I want to do. God's still going to bless me. God's a covenant God. I said, God is a God of covenant. And God says, obey my word and I'm going to do this. He didn't say, I'm going to do this no matter what you do. Get drunk, shoot up, get high, run around, cruise. I mean, you know, be a, be a, be a, uh, be promiscuous. Was that as clean as I could say it? I mean, I could have said ratchet or hulk anyway. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. I used to say skank. I, that's really a bad word, Pastor. Well, skank and ratchet and all that kind of stuff. Everybody's got a word for it. Promiscuous. Living anyway. It's all the same thing Nathan said. Doing all we want to do. Listen, God is a God of covenant. And we've lost the covenant mindset because now we come, oh, I'm under grace. And it doesn't matter what I do. God's going to do it. No, no, God's a God of covenant. And his word is his covenant oath to us. This is what's going to happen when you do this. This is what will happen if you don't do this. Now, if you do this, you're going to get all that. You're, you're not earning it. It's, it's walking in covenant. We're walking in covenant. We're walking in harmony with, with the, the agreement. Remember when you, when you got saved? Now, we, we do this, but we, tell, we teach it better now. Jesus saved me. You know, everybody, no, there's a lot of people want Jesus to save you, but they do not want him as Lord. And the Bible says, if you believe in your heart that God's raised Christ from the dead and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, Master, ruler. I am now, by confessing his lordship, submitted to his will, his design, his plan. That's why it says you confess him as Lord. Because you come into covenant. See, Paul's thinking covenant. We're coming into covenant with God, and I'm saying, I'm going to receive all your blessings of redemption. I'm going to receive the blessings of protection. I'm going to receive the blessings you have for me. But, I'm going to be submitted to your will and your design and your plan and live the way you want me to live. Now, you're so good that if I come up short, you've got empowerment to help me get over the top. If I mess up, you've got blood to forgive me with. But I am living, and to the best that I know how, to walk in harmony with your, my covenant with you that you've made with me. And I've confessed you as Lord. I'm now submitted to your will. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I don't care what kind of clothes they wear, if they're hip, metro, cool, slick, whatever. Now, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm just going to tell you up front, if you've got to wear skinny jeans to be a great preacher, I'm done. Because you ain't going to catch me in skinny jeans. Yeah. 
And I, listen, I get up in the morning with bedhead. I do everything I can to get rid of it. It's a frightful sight. So you won't catch me in bedhead or skinny jeans. All right? Being cool is not what we need in the church. Now, I don't care if they're cool that they're preaching the whole word. But when they're preaching what they think or their opinion or what they get people to listen to them or buy their books or buy their tapes, and, they're, and they just give, well, I, the Lord told me the other day. Well, you know, I don't care what the Lord told you the other day. Did he tell you what's in the word? Now, remember the vision that Dad Hagen had? If you haven't read I believe, the visions in a while, you go back and read it. <clears throat> but the one where he, Jesus appears to him and starts talking to him, he says, from this point forward, I'm going to, talk, I'm going to begin to teach you about demons, demons, uh, uh, Demon, the devil, demons, and demonic possession. Okay? And he said, while the Lord started talking to him, this demon ran out in front of him between him and the Lord and threw up a black cloud of smoke and started going, yak, 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 He finally, he could, hear, he could see the Lord was talking, but he couldn't hear him. And after a little bit of this, he finally said, in the name of Jesus, shut up. And that demon went plop, plop. He says, as a matter of fact, get out of here in the name of Jesus, don't come back. And the demon got up and ran out. And the Lord looked at him and said, well, if you hadn't done something about that, I couldn't have. Brother Hagin said, now, Lord, I know you said you wouldn't have. You didn't say you couldn't have. And he said he went through that with the Lord four times. The Lord said, now, I couldn't have done anything about it. And after the fourth time, he looked at the Lord and, said, and the Lord said, I said I couldn't. I didn't say I wouldn't. He said, well, Lord, you're going to have to prove that to me out of the Scriptures. See what? It doesn't matter what you hear. You believe the Lord told you. You've got to go prove it out with the Word. And that's why renewing our mind with the Word of God, we, we understand, we begin to live according to the Word. Not somebody going, you could go out there and have sex all you want to, and you're still going to heaven. You don't even have to give. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to obey. You don't have to go to church. Because you you're under grace. Now, but see, if you, when you read the Bible, and you renew your mind to that, I'm in covenant with God. My God says, come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you. God, I receive according to everything I said. When you start reading the word and renewing your mind, what is this? This is God's a covenant oath to us, his promise to us. And when we walk in harmony with it, we get that blessing. We got people wanting the blessing without investing. What do you mean investing? Investing their obedience to the covenant they made with God. See, God made a covenant with you, but you still got to make your half. And your half comes when you confess him as Lord, and he circumcises your heart, and now you're in, not, not, not by hands of men, but by the word of the Holy Ghost covenant, circumcises your heart, you're now in covenant with God, blood covenant with God. See, Jesus shed his blood for us, and we're in Christ. If you be Christ, then you Abraham's seed. We're in a blood covenant. Now, so now his word is available to me, the blessings of the word, but it is as I walk in harmony with that covenant. Now, well, what if I mess up? See, we're not walking in this thing. Well, did I mess up today? Yes. No. Did I mess? no, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is that when you are walking in harmony, when you do sin, or if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And Jesus made provision in that covenant. Even if you mess up in it, he's got a provision when you come to him. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, 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 and some of these people say, that's not written to Christians. Well, I'll, I'll beg to differ. James says, my brethren. He's addressing Christians. So what do we do? When we, when we do mess up, I've got a covenant with God. And in that covenant, he's made a provision for me messing up in the covenant. And then when, he said, now look, you come to me, and I'll make, I, I, Jesus is your, your, your advocate. He's going to argue your case based on his blood. And his throne is called the throne of grace. And what does it say? Let us come boldly to the throne of grace when we in the time of need. We can, now, when boldly, understanding, he's, he's inferring, we come with confidence that I'm not going to be rejected or kicked out because I'm coming with a, repent, a, a penitent heart, repentive, coming looking for forgiveness for what I've done. And I can come with great confidence because Jesus is my advocate. The blood of the covenant is on the mercy seat and I can come and receive that forgiveness in that hour and be completely restored, whole, completely before God. Glory to God. That's my covenant with my Father. I said, that's my covenant. It is not so I can go do what I want to do and get away with it. 
It is so that whenever I do mess up, he's already made a provision for me if I mess up. That's why John, John said, if any man sin, we have an advocate. Now see, under, under natural covenants, you mess up, you get killed. You break the covenant, you are, there's a death warrant out on you from your own family. Moses' son was not uh, circumcised, and God came down, and the Bible said, to kill him. He was a covenant breaker under the old covenant. Thank God we're in the new and the better. If we mess up, we got the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And his wife took a stone and circumcised him on the spot. So, why? God could not allow the lack of covenant being fulfilled because it was a covenant promise, blood covenant. They had to keep walking in the covenant to go forward. Why? Because somebody would take us an allegory today and teach it and teach that God didn't require it anymore. Didn't require us walking in harmony with the covenant. That's why when Moses couldn't go in because he struck the rock twice. Because somebody would be teaching. See, God allowed him to strike the rock twice. Christ has to be struck twice. So God couldn't allow it. Well, that was kind of harsh. He, couldn't get, he didn't get to go in. Yes, he did. Moses went in. Yeah. Called the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses showed up on the mount with Jesus, praise God. So he did get to go in, but he got to go in, in the, under the guise of redemption and not with, with striking Christ twice. Amen. Hallelujah. He just couldn't go in with the people <clears throat> at that time. Hallelujah. So Moses is called. God remembers his covenant. He calls Moses, sends him. And then uh, chapter 4, verse 24 26, I was just quoting that. <coughs> He's about to, about to do what God, God told him to do. And God comes down because he's got an uncircumcised son. His wife was mad with him too. Came to pass by the way. In the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. <laughs> you don't want the Lord showing up seeking to kill you. <laughs> Why? He was a covenant breaker. And then Zephyr. Took a sharp stone, cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet. He said, Surely you are a bloody husband, thou art to me. Let it, she let him go. And um, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Now, God could not allow uncircumcision to go. That was outside the covenant. They had to stay within the covenant. See, we stay within the covenant. How, what, how do we stay within the covenant? By faith. We live the life of faith. And see, we're in a blood covenant with God, and we live by faith. And when we break that covenant, we still have by faith access to the presence of God through the, through the redemptive work of Christ, through the uh, um, advocate, advocate work of Christ, going to the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Amen? All right. So, and then in Exodus chapter 20, now Israel got, I mean, they just, listen, this bunch of people. I mean, Moses got fed up one of them one day and said, why would you give me this bunch? Now, a couple weeks before that, he was going, Lord, don't wipe them out. Will the God of heaven not do right? Then, and then after that, he got fed up with them, ready to cook them. Probably thinking, why didn't I let the Lord cook them? But Genesis, I mean Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, uh, God gives us the law. And, and of course, it starts out with the, with the big ten, the ten commandments, what we, call, what we refer to as the ten commandments. They're ten of 3,000. So there's another 2,990. Now, these cover the, the biggies. Y'all got what I'm saying? These are the big ones. You, you get these down, you got, you know, most people can't even get the 10 down by themselves. And then Paul wrote and said, if you, if you break the law in one area, you broke the whole law. I mean, I went to 1.1 miles instead of one mile a day. I broke the covenant. I'm, a, I'm guilty of it. I'm a covenant lawbreaker. So God, God brings Moses up and begins to give him the law. How do they? Yes, before GPS. And then in verse 24 of uh, 26, we just talked about that. We talked about that. He, put, uh, he delivers the law to him, gives him the law. And in this here, he uses the word atonement. Why? Because we're not redeemed, they were not redeemed, they were atoned for. They were covered until another time. And until the law was given, there were only peace and burnt offerings were made. Now, atonement means to cover. Now, every, every year after this, they got to go to the tabernacle. And they got to bring a blood, an animal for blood sacrifice to cover their sins for one more year. Now, it covered everything up before in the next year. But if you skip that year, it all came back on you. 
is a temporary covering. It was a covering. When it's used in the New Testament, it's a mistranslation. Actually, they just used it. I don't know why. It's, it's, it's Pasco, Passover. You know, it's not it's Paschal. It's not, it's not um, covering. We're redeemed. We have redemption. We don't have covering in the New Covenant. But the blood of the sacrifice covered the sin of the people for a year. That's Exodus 29, verses 36 and 37. The yearly atonement was offered by the high priest in Exodus 30, 10. And then we'll run over now to Deuteronomy chapter 27. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Well, Lynn Meek there. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. That's so fine. Uh, uh. All right, thank you. Everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. I'm messing with you, buddy. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 11, Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Jerezium, and to bless the people when you are over Jordan, Simeon, and the, this, all the tribes. And the Levites shall speak, verse 14, and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven. Now listen, what's happening here? They, they lay out some curses. I mean, uh, uh, Cursed be um, he that smiteth the neighbor secretly. Cursed be he that uh, taketh reward to slay an innocent. That's a hit job. And to slay an innocent person. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of the law to do them. That's uh, getting on down here. But what happened in time of covenant well, this is what Stanley Livingston found out. They come out and say, okay, now that we're in covenant, here's what happened. My well is yours. My cattle is yours. My wife is yours. My children are yours. I mean, really, that's how, that's how far it was. If a guy came and wanted to lay with the guy's wife, he had covenant right to her. That's how strong it was. Now, if you operate in the covenant properly, you wouldn't do that because that's his wife. But they had the right to it, to do that. You know, I got the right to kill you if you killed him. You were going to get killed because you broke the covenant. All right? And what they would do, they would say, now, here's a blessing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this. You're going to do this. We're going to do it. And then they all, okay, woo, break. That's great. We're, look at all the stuff we're getting because we're in covenant. And then the chief, the uh, witch doctor would come out and go, now, if you break the covenant, your fields will be a sewer. And the fleas of a thousand camels will infest your armpits and nostrils. I mean, you know, what a, come up with some of the worst, worst curses they could imagine. We'll hunt you down and disembowel you in the field. I mean, all kinds of stuff. There was a blessing and a covenant, covenant blessing and a cu curse when they came into covenant. Blessing if you keep it, curse if you don't. And so we get to Deuteronomy 28, and it says, And it shall come to pass, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, <clears throat> and do all the commandments which I command thee this day. The Lord will set thee up on high above all nations of the earth, and these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Then it goes on down through verse 14, 15, and just verse 14, announcing all the blessings. And they're good. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed when you come in, blessed when you rise up, blessed when you lie down, blessed in the fruit of your body, blessed in your cattle, blessed in your kind, blessed in your vineyards. I mean, blessed, 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 blessed. How many like the blessings? Then he came back in the next 45 verses and gave curses. There were three times as many curses as there were blessings. Why? Wow, we live in a cursed world. You just enhanced it all by breaking a covenant with God. Now, Christ had been made a curse for us. Uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Galatians 3.13. Think about that now. That is why under the new covenant we can walk in the blessing and we don't have to fear, I mean, the, the curses of 45 verses of curses, that we can come to the throne, the, the throne of grace, and receive forgiveness and redemption and, and reconciliation in the hour when we've broken our end of the deal or broken the end of the covenant. Because Christ redeemed us from it. He said that, you know, he redeemed us from the curse of the law that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. Thank God I'm under blessing. Well, how do I stay under blessing? I live by faith and not by sight. Amen? I, see, people who live by faith live according to the word. I'm not trying to earn it. That's how I live. I'm not trying to go, okay, God, I did 400s. I believe I'm healed today. You got to heal me. No. I confess what the Word says because I believe it. 
I tithe because I believe His Word. I give because I believe His Word. I do the things I do in faith according to what God's Word says because I believe it's a covenant oath to me. When I walk this way, He does this. And I'm in a covenant with Him. And He's going to do it because He promised to do it. And I trust His Word. I believe His Word. God's not a man that He should lie. You're the Son of Man that He should repent. Glory to God. <clears throat> I wish I could do my Shambot voice this morning. God is not a man! Hallelujah. Buddy Harrison said one time that uh, R.W. Shambot was the greatest preacher of faith he ever heard. Not teacher, but preacher. Man could preach. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, God gives the blessings and God gives the cursings. Then he tells us that Christ comes to take the curse away from us. Why? Because now in Christ, when I sin, I can just repent and come into his presence by faith and be re restored and still walk in the covenant blessings. I don't have to spend six weeks in, outside the camp and I don't have to have leprosy, get, get leprosy off of me. Amen. I can go repent, turn to God. Amen. All right. And so, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Lord, no it ain't. No it isn't. It's a figment of your imagination. Because it is 1117 in Tennessee. Galatians chapter 3. At least in Nashville and further. Actually, right around where the Cracker Barrel Home Office is is where the time zone. Isn't it kind of funny how I could relate things to food? It's right, it's right near the uh, time zone divider. You learn something new every day, don't you? We just ate at 12, it's 11. Let's eat again. <laughs> All right. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 says, And unto Abraham and his seed, the, the promises made. God made, a pro God made a promise. Why did he make a promise? Because he made a covenant. That promise was just not arbitrary words floating out there just because he wanted to do it. It was a covenant oath to Abraham that God made these promises. Folks, he just, it's not just a matter of, well, God just said, yeah, well, God does what God wants. No, he made a covenant. This is a covenant promise. And to Abraham and his seed was this promise made. This is the, co this is the promise of the covenant. Remember, because you withheld not your son, your only son, that in multiplying I will multiply thee, and in blessing I will bless thee. Amen. And God expands on that over time. So I'll curse them that curse thee and bless them that bless you. I mean, you know, it's not good. That's why I say, it's not good to be against Israel. And I got news for you. All these people coming against the church, it ain't good to be against the church. Now, God will give them their opportunity to come to him. But at some point in time, he's going to lower the hammer. He don't do that. He's a God of love. Ask Paul. Do you think Jesus showed up on the road to Damascus to have a social visit? He knocked him off his horse. And a voice cries, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul goes, who are you? Lord? I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Big trouble. But Paul, being a very intelligently guided man, gets and stiffens his neck and says, I don't give a rip who you are. No, you know what he said? What will you have me to do, Lord? Well, he believes he's raised from the dead. Look at him. And he confesses him as Lord. Go into the city, and I'll tell you what things you will do. But you have to suffer for my name's sake. Don't tell me Jesus won't take care of his people. Now, the persecution will go so far. Now, here's the problem. When you're running with the world, you're going to get burned with the world. So church, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. 
Stop trying to do stuff. Stop living in the, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean Democrat, Republican, Independent, Socialist. We have got to be praying. We need to be the church and praying the will of God. And stop looking to a man or to a woman or a party to fix everything. Now, look, I understand there's going to have to be certain people placed in office, but there's going to have to be people we pray in. And, and listen, and you're going to have to pray after they get in. Because they could turn and go a different direction. I said they can turn and go a different direction. And make decisions contrary to what you thought they should make. We have a Supreme Court justice that was supposed to be super conservative and just turn around and, and, and vote gay marriage in last year. He was the deciding vote. Well, he's supposed to be ultra conservative. Ultra conservative people don't do that. Two years before, they, they voted in the, the, uh, the Affordable, affordable <laughs> Health Care Act. How many found it more affordable? If you're buying insurance, it's not more affordable. My, my, my benefits went down, policy price went up, and, co and copay went up. Went from 80 20 down to 70 30, and they cover less. It used to be like a $35 copay, it's now 90 just to go to the doctor. That's, that's a state health insurance plan. Yep. I'm not saving money. See, he voted, he said, that, he said it was a tax, and the, the government lawyers argued it wasn't a tax. And he still argue, argued for them it was a tax and gave it to them. So what I'm saying is, you can't trust that just because a certain man or a certain woman is placed in a position of power that you, that's the right person, that it fixes everything. We are the church, and we've got to be praying, we've got to be seeking God, that God moves in our nation, in our land. And I'm in covenant with God. And God said, if my people, which are called by my name. So church, we need to get out of bed with some political party where we are living at the behest of what they say, that they're going to do exactly what they say, or put all our faith that they're going to fix it. Because I'm going to tell you what, at any point in time, they could change. No matter who they are, no matter what they say. So what do I got to do as a believer? Now, I know who I'm, I, I, I'm going to vote for. I'm going to vote for people who, who, who are at least running in line with my beliefs as much as possible. I'm not going to vote for people who are pro-abortion. I'm not going to vote for people who are pro-gay marriage. I'm not going to vote for people who want to take my guns because I know why they want to take my guns. They are Marxists. They want to take over the country. That's the only reason they want your guns. They want to turn us into a totalitarian Lenin Marxist state. That's why they want your guns. So go buy you a gun and carry it. You've got a constitutional right to it. I need to go get a gun. We have them in the house. They all belong to him. <laughs> but I just love the thought. If somebody tries to come in the back door, right, I know where to go get the, the, shot, the pump shotgun and go, shoot, shoot. Even don't have anything in it. They know it's on the other side of the door. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Well, I, better, I better get off that. Hallelujah. He said, And to Abraham and his seed with the promises made, I say not the seeds as of one, but as, as of many. So Abraham has a covenant with God. It's a covenant with God that is confirmed in Christ. In verse 29, if you be Christ, then Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, we're going, we're going to stop here for this week. We're going to pick up next week. Like I said, our goal in the next few weeks is to, is to lay this foundation of blood covenant so we understand. I'm in covenant with God. God is not an oath breaker, a covenant breaker. God cannot lie. Why? Because God's in a blood covenant with us. God can do anything he wants to, and he made a covenant with us. God sovereignly came to Abram and said, As for me, my covenant's with you. And Abraham accepted those terms. And now God may promise. And God can't break his word. We get so caught up with God can do anything he wants to do, and that God's going to do this and God's going to do that, even when we don't do anything ourselves. And God says, Now, here's what you got to do. You obey my commandments. That's when the, that's, the law was given to remind them that God requires us to live by his moral code. Now, you cannot live that way on your own. 
You live by faith. You trust the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's, that's why the new covenant came, the new and the better covenant. Now we're in Christ, that if we mess up, the covenant didn't get broken, and we can run up there and get forgiveness and go back out and go back to work. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God that if I mess up, I don't destroy the covenant. Why? He made his oath, he made his oath between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He was the seed that the Father was referring to, that all the nations would be blessed, that the gates of his enemies he would possess. Jesus, Jesus whooped the devil. Now, I was, I was on this thing about, look, the church has got to stop being in the bed with the world, believing that the world's going to fix their problems. Hello. Did you not know that in the last days perilous times will come? Hello? Read what Paul wrote to Timothy. Men should be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. America needs a revival, but the church has got to stop playing games. We've got to stop signing in with stuff that's ungodly. And I mean in every arena you can think of. We've got to stop signing in with stuff that's ungodly. We, I mean, back when they did the uh, uh, Proposition 8 or whatever it was, Proposition 2, 1, whatever, the, 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 the no gay marriage bill in North Carolina, pastors were on there screaming about uh, Christians being against, uh, being against homosexual marriage. Duh! The Bible says that a man that lies with a man shall be stoned. My brother. <laughs> hey, Eddie, I got a verse for you. What? If a man lies with another man, like a boy does with a woman, he must be stoned. <laughs> and he won't talk about with stone. He's talking about smoking some happy weed. You'd have to be stoned to do that. And then he looks at it and says, pray, pray for me, big brother. I said, I, got, I, I don't have that much time in a day. I told him that a couple times on this trip. Then his wife joined in. I said, I'm going to have to get me another job. Hallelujah. Now, the church has to understand we're in covenant with God. We answer to God. And we need to stop bowing at the altar of who's going to do something for us and bowing at the altar of the one who's done everything for us and serve him with all of our heart. Amen? The only way we're going to break racial junk in this country is for the church to be the body of Christ and put off our color and put off, listen, we're not, you even have to put off a culture when it interferes. I love different cultures. I love Native American culture. I love African American culture. I love Hispanic culture. I love, you know, well, some white culture. Um, some of the stiffest people you ever met them. I mean, my, my family's got some Irish in it, and they, they some stiff folk. Dear Lord, and they get burned too easy, too. My dad's a redhead. He told me, I said, I've never had a tan in my life. My freckles just run together. Get in the summer, start getting some of his freckles. He just pop up all over the place. That would be one big freckle. Well, we got to get to the point we walk in a covenant with God and with one another because we're in covenant with God and live in accordance with that. And we tell the politicians, you're going to have to bow at the knee of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're going to have to vote and make decisions according to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're going to have to stop doing it for the corporations or the special interest group or the one who's the squeakiest wheel there is. You're going to have to bow. And we're not going to, we're not going to do protest you. We're going to get in the closet and put the Holy Ghost on you. Amen. And let the pressure of God come on you. Amen. And we can get things done because we are in covenant with God. And he said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and call on my name, amen, then will I hear from heaven. And I, I didn't quite quote it right, but I'm, I, you get in the gist. And heal their land. I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. we got a covenant right to God to heal our land. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the 
giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.